Hello everybody and welcome back to another math learning video. Today we brought you guys this problem here. Find all the real solutions and the equation that we're going to do that for is 2 to the power of x plus 8 to the power of x is equal to 130. So by finding all the real solutions it means that we need to solve for x basically, right? And then we can only have real numbers. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So as you can see, our x, both of our x's are inside or are being, are an exponent, right? So that means that normally what you want to do to get rid of an exponent or to get it out of an exponent is do logarithms, right? However, we cannot do it here because if we were to immediately just do logarithms like this, we have on the left side we have logarithm 2x plus 8x and there is no rule or anything that can help us solve for this so we would just be stuck here so that is not what we're going to do and instead what we're going to do is let's look at the 8x 8 to the power of x and we can rewrite this because what we want to do is we want to get both of these terms, so the 2 to the power of x and 8 to the power of x, have the same base. And the base obviously is this, the number that's not the exponent, so the base here is 2, the base here is 8. So how can we get this base here of 8 into 2? Well, if we think about it, 8 is also equal to 2 to the power of 3. So 8x is equal to 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x. So let's go ahead and write that. Oh, I wrote that wrong, sorry. So 2 to the power of x, 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x is equal to 130. And now there are some rules that we can go about with. So, so for example, this 2 to the 3 to the x, if you have an exponent being powered to another exponent, that is the exact same thing. So we are allowed to multiply the two exponents together. So here, the 2 to the 3 to the x, we can multiply the 3 and the x together. So this exact same thing is 2 to the 3x. And now using this, we can change this 2 to the 3 to the x into 2 to the x to the 3. Okay? Because if we were to multiply x to the 3 together, we'd get 2 to the 3x. So I'm going to do that, and you may be asking why, and I'll show you right now, because here we have 2 to the x plus 2 to the x to the 3 is equal to 130. So here we have 2 to the x showing up twice, right? So that means that we can substitute 2 to the x for a variable to make this problem easier, to break it down easier, okay? Because Right now, working with these exponents would be hard. So now, we, let's just substitute this 2 to the x for any variable. I'm going to just put y. So instead of having 2 to the x in this equation, I'm going to just put y. So y plus y to the 3 power, so cube, let's not forget that, is equal to 130. And now, what we can do is we can find the roots of this equation so when y is equal to 0 and then just plug 2x to the power of x instead of y okay so let's go ahead and do that so first thing we want to do is we want to find when y plus y to the cubed is equal to 130 so what value for y would that be so we have our equation here I put on the top right now and what I'm going to do is we're going to use synthetic division to find values, to find our zeros, okay? So when we're putting synthetic division, we need to write our equation in terms, so from the greatest exponent to the least. So, and also we are going to set this equation equal to zero. So if you subtract 130 from both sides, we'll get y thirds, I'll just put the y to the thirds, y to the three in the beginning plus y minus 130 because we subtracted 130 
and then equal to zero because the 130 then cancels out after we subtracted it and now what we're going to do is we are going to do synthetic division so synthetic division is when we divide this equation by one of its known roots however we do not know one of the roots or one of the values that will make this equation equal to zero so how do we figure this out well to figure this out we are going to guess and check okay however whenever you're given one of these problems where you have to guess and check the value which you're the value which you're looking for is normally always going to be a set amount so it's always either going to be for example plus minus one plus minus two plus minus three plus minus four plus minus five so it's not going to be anything too crazy okay so what we're going to do is we're going to plug each of these values into for y and we need to see if it'll be equal to zero okay and also a good rule for synthetic division is that we only need to check the values which are which you can divide 130 by so which are factors of 130 because this 130 is the value here so which so that means we can exclude some values so 130 divided by 1 is possible divided by 2 is also possible however 130 divided by 3 3 is not a factor of 130 so we do not have to worry about 3 and 4 we also do not have to worry about because 4 is also not a factor of 130 but 5 is a factor okay so now let's go ahead and let's just plug in each of these values and one of them hopefully will give us this uh, one of them will hopefully make this equation true so let's just plug in one so one for y one cube plus one for y minus 130 is equal to zero so one cube is one plus one minus 130 and that is clearly not equal to zero so let's go ahead and try again for negative one so I check so negative one cubed plus negative one minus one hundred thirty is equal to zero. So here is what negative one cubed is negative one minus one minus one hundred thirty. That is once again not equal to zero. So this it seems that our values that we're producing are too small. So instead of going directly to two. I have a feeling that 5 has a greater chance of giving us something that's equal to 0. So I'm going to just skip ahead to 5. And if it's not 5, I'm going to go back to 2. So let's plug in 5. So 5 cubed plus 5 minus 130 equal to 0. So 5 cubed is 125 plus 5 is 130 minus 130 is, as a matter of fact, equal to 0. So we have our value that y is equal to 5 okay so it is 5 so that's good to know and now what are we going to do with this 5 well we are going to use it for our synthetic division so the synthetic division is we set up a table here or a sort of table so we put like this and we put our our root or the value that we already found so this is already one of the y values we put it over here and then inside our table we put first our y to the third value then our y to the second value then our y to the first value and then our constant okay so let's see what are these values so our y to the third is we have a y to the third here so that means that if it's just like that, that means that the coefficient in front of it is just 1. Our y to the second here, so y squared, we don't have it here at all. So that means that its coefficient is 0. Our y to the 1, once again, we don't have a coefficient in front of it. So it's just 1. And then our constant here is negative 130. So always don't make sure you don't forget the negative so now how we're going to do this is to do synthetic division is we're going to bring this first value down one and then we're going to multiply this value here so the y value the the number that we're dividing by 
and we're going to multiply it by the value here. So 5 times 1 is 5. So we bring the 5 here because the 5 times 1 is equal to 5. And then we add it together to the value here. So 0 plus 5 is equal to 5, right? So now once again, we're going to come to 5. We are going to multiply 5 times 5. That's equal to 25. And now 25 plus 1, so remember we add these values together, is equal to 26. And now 26 times 5, 26 times 5 is equal to 130. And now we got our 0. So it's good that we got 0 because this value is our remainder in the back. So if had we not had gotten 0, that means that this value, our 5 value here, our y equals 5 would be wrong. But it's not, so we did not get a remainder value. And now what we're going to do is that we can actually ignore the zero and we're going to use these values here, so this 1, 5, and 26, and write a new equation with this being y squared, this being y, and this being the constant. So we have 1y squared, or 1y squared I can just write as y squared, right? Because 1 in the coefficient doesn't change anything. Plus 5y, this 5 is the coefficient, plus 26 is equal to 0, okay? So we got this new equation that's based off of the old equation. And now we can find, we need to find the zeros for this equation, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So now we have this new equation and we want to figure out if we can find any more y values for our, to solve for our problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to factor this. We need to find the factors. However, when doing this, I'm going to use the quadratic formula because using the x method, it's not really that easy here. So we're going to use the quadratic formula, which always works. So for those who don't remember, the quadratic formula is negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So, what is our a, our b, and c values? So our a is the value that's being squared. And remember, it's always the coefficient, okay? So a is here, the coefficient. However, the coefficient, we don't see it, so it's just 1, right? Our b is our 5. So from our second, and our c is going to be 26, the constant, okay? So let's go ahead and plug it in. So negative b, b, remember we said is 5, plus minus square root of b squared. So 5 squared minus 4, 1, 26 over 2 times 1. Okay, so this looks, so we need to simplify this. However, let's go ahead and look inside our square root, okay? So 5 squared is equal to what? It's equal to 25. And then 4 times 1 times 26 is equal to a value that is greater than 25, right? So if we have 25 minus a value that's greater than 25, that means that it's a negative number inside, right? And we cannot square root a negative number without getting into imaginary solutions. But remember, this problem asks for all real solutions. That means that we're not going to worry about these solutions because they're not real, right? So we don't have to go any further because these solutions are not real. So we know that the only real solution for this equation right now, for our for our y plus y cubed is equal to 130 is just y is equal to 5, okay? So that's all that we have. That's the only real solution that we have so far. So we have that our y is equal to 5. And now remember, we set y equal to 2 to the power of x, right? So now all we have to do is we need to substitute y for 5. So 5 is equal to 2 to the power of x. So all we need to do is simplify this and solve for x to get our final answer. So now we can use logs to get the x 
outside of the exponent place. So remember what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So log of 5 is equal to log of 2x. Sorry, I wrote that wrong. 2 to the power of x. And now there is a rule within logarithms that if you have an exponent inside a logarithm like this x here, you can multiply, you can multiply to the front here. So this is equal to log 5 is equal to x times log 2. Okay, because we move this exponent to the front. And now to solve for x, all we just is divide log 2. So we get that our x is equal to log 5 over log 2. And that is our final answer, okay? So if you have a calculator, you could probably do this in your calculator, but I do not. So I'm not going to do this. This is how simplified as it can go. So that is it for today. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Bye.